Hello, I'm Brian McKinney. I was here at the University of Miami from 1999 to 2002. And I'm here with Coach Mirabal here at the Legends Camp. How are we doing today, Coach Mirabal? You know what, Brian, I'm doing great. Uh, I'm Alex Mirabal. I have the, uh, the honor to be the offensive line coach here at the University of Miami. And it was awesome being today, today at the Legends Camp with, uh, with so many le true legends, mm -hmm. uh, Brian. Uh, not only yourself, obviously, who's just uh, been going into the College Football Hall, Hall of Fame. Congratulations yeah, thank on you very that. Much. We're all very proud of you thank here you. at the University of Miami. And uh, but all the other guys that were out there with you, you know, it was like it looked like a who's who of first round picks. It did. You know, and 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 it's great. And the only thing that I kind of wish was a little bit different when we do the Legends Camp. I would love for a lot of our own players mm -hmm. to be here. You know, oh, and okay, a yeah. lot of our players are now it's discretionary week, so they're back home and they'll be coming back on Sunday. But, you know, I think it's always important for our players to know mm. those guys who came before yeah, them. Yeah, the history. Who made the U what the U right. is, right? You know, they, they all brag and they all throw up the U, mm. but some, a lot of these guys sometimes don't know about history. Bryant McKinney and mm. the history. And, 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 you know, he just walked out of here, Greg Mark, mm. uh, Gino Toretta, and those guys. So those are guys that I think I don't think I know would be tremendous for these guys to know about, you know, and I think they, they would play even harder for mm. the U if they knew, man, you know, these are the guys that I got to look up to. Right. Um, I kind of said that earlier in conversation uh, about having like a lot of those guys around and even on the sidelines. I knew when I was here and you had like your Bernie Kozar and Michael Irvin, those guys on the sideline. Warren said, I would raise my level of play because I didn't want like a scrub in front of those guys too. So, you know, it's like, oh, let me really like, you need to get it together because they're here cheering us on. Yeah, and you know, as, as, a, as a coach here now in the program, like there's a lot of coaches other parts of the country that might be, feel threatened mm. when, when someone like, like a Bryant McKinney comes around mm. or you know, we had uh, Vernon Carey around. Right. I, I'm the opposite. I love it because I love for them to get the real perspective mm. of from a, from a guy like, like you who's played at the highest level uh, that that football could, that you can in the game right. of football, you know, like like you said at the end there to those campers, you said, you know, if you keep if you move your feet, you won't get beat, you, beat, beat, you know, yeah. and and that's something that you know, I might say it in a different way to mm. our guys here at Miami, but the way you said it, I'm like, you know what, I'm stealing that. Oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna give you credit for it, <laughs> but, but I'm gonna steal it and use it with with our guys in, in the room, and you know, it's just it's simple, but in its simplicity, it's yeah. so impactful, you know. If they really think about just. You may get your hands swiped another, but keep your feet going and keep it in front of the guy. You know, you can recover. So that's very important. That was something that was always instilled in me at a young age, and that's something I always try to do. Yeah, and it was it's awesome because, you know, I think a lot of, obviously, you're a, you're a big man, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but what I tell everybody, Bryant, from what I remember, elite feet, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because you could be big, but if you can't move, yeah, then then it doesn't it doesn't look good, doesn't do anything, right? Yeah. So so one of the things that we look for, uh, Brian, when we're out recruiting guys and we're mm. trying to bring guys into the program, sure we like all these guys to look like you. Mm. Yeah, that's not gonna happen, mm. right? But what could happen is we could get a guy who's six foot four that possesses the same type of feet that you right. have, you know. And, and I think that's important, you know, because like today, Brian, we, I was I was out, I was there with Coach Pata, Coach Bain, who helped coach the offensive line mm. with me. And they're like, you know what? There's a bunch of guys here, you know, a bunch of D linemen here, linebackers here, DBs here that that are were former first round picks here and played mm. for multiple years in the NFL. Right. But none of them look like you. Mm. None of them are built like you, you know. Mm. Uh, but what what separated you was was your feet, in my mm. opinion. You know, and obviously you have long arms, but your feet as well. Right. And my feet. And then I, I talked to another um, player that was here, yeah. O lineman who um, a current O lineman going to I say it's like a sophomore or something. Or, and I told him another thing that really helped me, I was film study. And when Mario was here, he was like their assistant O-line coach and he would sit and help me. When I had these big players that I had to go against, it was like film study and studying their tendency. So in your mind, if you had an idea of it's third and long and what do they like to do on their pass rushing, just already knowing and having a game plan going in on how you want to attack that player is a big deal. So really studying your opponent is really big. Like you don't, and then having mental reps in your mind, I would go over things in my mind of, as if I'm already like practicing against these moves, taking mental reps, because your mind doesn't know that your body hasn't done it. So when you see it in person, you're going to start to react faster. Yeah. Now, you know, would you, saying? Brian, picking up on that, would you, like when you were here at Miami, when you were with the Vikings, when you were with the Ravens, 
and you were with the Dolphins for a period of time, right? Mm. As well. Would you have, like, would you tell, hey, the guy that's showing you the, the show team, the scout team, oh, yeah. would you have him work those moves? Yep. Um, we actually had, he wasn't even, he was a starter, and I would, I would get him because he had a great get off. He was really good with Jerome McDougal. Okay. And he played on the other side, but certain weeks I would say, I need you to come over here because you have such a great burst and he was a very good pass rusher. I would need you to emulate when it's time for Dwight Freeney, just certain guys. I need him to emulate those guys for me. And we, you know, the coaches, we'll stay after practice because, you know, he has to get his reps over there too. Sure. But I would have, um, I needed him. Like, I, he had the quickest get off and those guys had those same, possessed the same skills as him. So I needed him. And I, after practice, we're taking a bunch of reps. You know, a pass protection for me because I'm wrong, like, I, I'm okay, you know, going against a speed rush guy, but in the pass protection and whether I'm on the road with him, emulate me being on the road and I have to use my peripheral to watch the ball and really f concentrate on my technique of just setting back, you know what I mean, and not out on the road, like setting back and allow it to be. Because what I learned from, luckily I had always great defensive ends. I would always ask them what they're looking for and I knew that they had a certain point that they would try to rush to, like a Jared Allen, Terrell Suggs. And if they couldn't beat me to that point, then that's when a counter would happen. So even knowing how they think. So you have they have a great defensive end that they practice every day. Get in their head and ask them, well, what is you looking for? We're on the same team at the end of the day. What is you looking for? Let me get your thought process. So I know if I trust my technique, because some guys get nervous, especially on the road, and they want to jump out there, and you're creating a bigger space in between you and the guard. You got to know what type of step drop it is. If it's three-step, yeah, I can jump set. If it's this, you got to know where your guard is sliding, where you have help. If you don't have help, a lot of times you're on the island by yourself. You have to know those things. Those, all those things determine how you set. You know, no doubt. We, we talk. I tell them all the time. Know where your help's coming, because when you know where your help's coming, right. Then, shame on you if you get beat, right, to your help. You right. know. So and and Co Brian, where you're just you're you're dropping massive knowledge, mm. and I tell our guys are the separations in the preparation. It is. You know, it's in the preparation, and I one of the things that we have to do mm. as college coaches, which I know you were saying that Coach Cristobal helped you when mm. when 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 you were here and he was an assistant is, you know, we got to teach these guys how to watch film right? and what to look for, mm -hmm. right? And what to look for because you're not, it, it's not like you're eating popcorn. You're not watching a game. You know, you got to watch the game within the game, mm -hmm. you know, and, and is, there, is there a tip off? You know, is, how, 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 is it a closed stance? Is it an open stance? And then even for the offensive lineman, like even if there's like draws, sell a pass, like, you know, sell, so you start, it's mind game too. So you start selling like certain things and make them feel like, and they they have their little things like Delta. I remember back when we were here, they would say Delta. That means a flight. That means a pass. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, you you know, certain people by mistake would just sell like it's a run or a pass. And if you're up in your you know two point stance and you're just really selling, it's a pass play and make them think it. And then it's really a draw. It gets them to rush up field. And you just swap them swat them field. Swat right. Field. So then now it's like they're not sure. You know, sometimes on your set, so they have to start to become a little honest, you know? So, and then communicate when they get on the sideline with the coaches of what they see and what can work. I remember being on the sidelines and they asked me, well, how is it over there? How are you doing over there? I'm like, run over there because I feel like I can really drive the person to the ball. Run over there all day. Now right. that gives me a chance to wear them down in the run and that slows down their pass. Their pass so, you got to just kind of work things to your advantage, especially if I had a pass rusher. And I feel like I'm handling him in the run. I want to keep attacking him in the run to just keep beating up on him. And then that's going to slowly start, by the second half, start wearing down his, his speed rush. And then I didn't mind being physical. I had to use that as my advantage to keep beating on the person. Until right. Third, fourth quarter, their yeah. rush your, isn't the same. Your strength is your strength. Yeah. You know, your, strength, <laughs> your strength is your strength. Your strength is your right. power. And so one of the things that I've, that I've tried to relate to these, to these guys is, you know, like defense alignment in general. Mm -hmm. There's some exceptions. But defensive line in general are better athletes than you, mm -hmm. right? That's why they're playing on the D line mm -hmm. and you're playing on the O line. Uh, now there are exceptions, mm -hmm. right? Such as yourself, there are exceptions. So I say, even when it's pass protection, stop being passive. Right. You know, take the fight to them. Mm -hmm. You know, the jump sets, work the jump sets, and right. you can't be a pitcher. A pitcher can't always throw fastballs. If you, you do, switch it up. They're gonna sit on it and hit it. Over. You got to switch it up. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I try to tell them is, and I'll use with them, Brian, a lot is, okay, how are they being coached? You know, when you watch D-line coaches in practice, mm -hmm. they never, ever, ever work how to defeat a jump set. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always where they, where the, where the rusher has time and distance, and mm -hmm. they're doing all that, you know, Mr. Miyagi hands, stuff, yeah. and swatting hands. So I say, so I say, as an offensive line coach, one of the things I try to teach them is, what are the defensive linemen being coached? What are they being taught? Mm -hmm. You know, so that we can try to use that against them. 
you know? And like, for instance, if we're running a wide zone play and you're the open side tackle and you've mm. got the five technique, right? I'll tell them, hey, hat speed, throw your hat outside. Mm. The D line is gonna say, oh, smokes. The D don't get reached, don't get reached. Right. When that happens, torque his butt out. Mm. Torque his butt out and the, the running back will be able to stick his foot in the ground and, and puncture, yeah. you know? So it's, it's the, and, it's, a, it's so much more of a chess mess. It's not just a brutal sport. And even when you do that, just make sure nobody's over top because if somebody might be over top, then he may slam inside. They, they, just be able to, and that's just film study, you know what I'm saying, and being aware. Absolutely. And one of the things, uh, Brian, you know, is, and it, it is a recruiting deal. So, like, we have our, our, our right tackle. He's a true freshman, mm. Francis Maui Goa. And one of the things that, that's allowing him to play fast and early is the fact that he doesn't play with blinders on, mm. you know, it's beyond, Hey, that's my guy. Mm. You know, he can see, you know, if, if then, if there's a, a safety capping right. the, the nickel, Hey, here comes a nickel. He can alert the center, mm. you know, communication, and communication. That's communication. big. I always say that too. Um, I remember a few years back, I'm like, are y'all talking to each other? And, and, and even if you know, like I was the person who over communicated because even Absolutely. if I know, I'm just letting you know, like, hey, we got this, that, and other. I'm just always going to call it out because that makes me feel more comfortable. And I know that I told you, you know, yeah. it's us two to those two or whatever. Yeah. So I know that we're working together. You, I know that you know we're working together. And just over-communicating so you both can play fast. You both for sure know your assignment and not assuming or trying to guess. So when I, when I, when I teach in the offensive line room on a daily basis, what I do is I put them all on the spot every day. Mm -hmm. And when I say on the spot is... Like our center's name is Matt Lee. I said, mm. Matt, what's the front? Right. Coach, it's Bear. Or Coach, it's Odd. Or Coach, it's Four Down. Mm. Matt, what's the call? Hey, we're gonna go Sting Forty Five. Right. Right. And then he and he and then he turns and he he'll t he'll turn and tell the left guard, left tackle, hey, B thirty three. Mm. In the old line room, I sit him. So like for instance, you would be sitting where the left tackle's spot mm. is in the first row. The backup left tackle would be behind you, behind, yeah. and and they they sit you know, as in a unit. Yep. So they could communicate while we're watching mm -hmm. film. And one of the things that I do, I say, I'll say, oh, hey, Bryant, what do you have here? Coach, uh, coach, we're going to go triple there. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I do that, A, I want to know that you know what you're doing. Exactly. But also, I do it. More importantly, the other guys in the room need to know that Bryant knows what he's doing so that they can trust you mm -hmm. in the game. And you'll play faster. And you could, yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that's, I, I agree with you, you know, in terms of like communication. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, and you can't, I say. Once you're confident in what you're doing, because the thing is when, you, when you're not, un, when you're unsure, you move slow. Yes. And then you're like hoping you don't make a mistake and you're messing up the play. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. that's why they always say, just hit somebody full speed if you're not sure. Because right. the dancing and being unsure, it looks like it on camera. And yeah. then it's like the defense, they just know they have a gap. So they mm -hmm. can always move fast, but you're tiptoeing and being unsure is slowing down things. And then there's probably going to be penetration from the D line because of your unsureness. Yeah. So just know what you're doing. You'll play fast and attack if you need and to. And one of the things when I ask them the questions in the old line room, how do you answer it? Because if you don't, if you answer like, you're like, well, co co coach, I think mm -hmm. then, then you're so not sure. sure. Yeah. Right. So that's another thing that, that it helps, but, but like communication and stuff is hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Now, Brian, what game, what game established you um, in college? My junior year, we played um, Florida State, and that game actually established myself, Ken Dorsey, and Jeremy Shockey. That game, you had one of the top overall pass rushers named Jamal Reynolds, um, who got a lot of sacks, um, I guess tormented us. We hadn't beaten Florida State in five seasons prior, and that was my first. So I was under the radar, you know what I mean? It was my first season. I was under the radar as a tackle, just playing. And then this, you have this guy who is known to get a lot of sacks. It's our rival, so you know it's going to be, you know, more intense. And I think he might have had, like, a assist tackle or one tackle or something like that the whole game. And that's – I remember being the next day. I was, in like, in Denny's with my family. And in the newspaper, it showed, like, Shockey – with the win and touchdown, and then like it highlighted breakout game for Dorsey, Shockey, and myself. Yeah, and that yeah. was that was it. I remember being a young high school coach, mm. and I remember where I remember where I like okay, who's that seventy eight? Was when you uh, went against Dwight Freeney. Oh yeah, that and down no. here in the Orange Bowl. So the year with Jamal Reynolds, it was just like 
the, the make a name for yourself, you know, type of year. And I finished that season, had to go against Alex Brown from Florida, who yeah. was another top, you know, pass rusher. But now we're going into my senior, senior. year where they're highlighting, you know, from junior college and even here I haven't given up a sack, which I didn't never think about. Like, you, you know, just, just, your just doing your job. Did and then all of a sudden it became a thing. Like, so now I became like a target. <laughs> <laughs> I did because yeah. I remember um, my I remember playing against Florida State up there and the guy must have got a good jump on the ball and must have got close to Dorsey and I must have gave like a final like shove and it pushed them wide away and their sideline they were losing their sideline like he rubbed it like yeah like and I was looking like wait what happened not realizing they were so glued into me and the defensive end they right. thought he was about to have a sack. They were just erupting. Like, that was a victory within themselves. Right. And then that made me say, okay, I still have to play at a level like, regardless how I feel or whatever, I still have to play at a higher level than him because it's not even about if we win or lose. It's now about just a personal victory between me and these guys who are trying to, right. you know, make names for themselves and do all this stuff to break this streak and all this. So I really mentally just had to regroup in that game and just moving forward was just like, Okay, this is a thing. Like you know, the way they, that sideline erupted, and I was I was confused, like looking like what's, and then they they were pointing at me like you you you, and then then that gave him like a little hope. The defensive end, yeah. like yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. And I'm like wait a minute. So did you shut him down the rest of the yeah, game? Yeah, of course. And go. then it was like now I had to like regroup and it was like I can't you know be off at all. Like I really have to just be on even even when he's on my. My A game has to always be better than everybody else's, or my lowest still has to be better than his best. Like, yeah. And then from there, building up to Dwight Freeney, which his junior, our junior year, he must was injured. We were in Syracuse. He must was injured, so he didn't play um, when we were in Syracuse. But now they had this big like hype about him. They had a whole photo shoot. I remember the coaches bringing in like this newspaper spread. It was like he had a sack and it had all the helmets from. I guess different teams that he um, that he had sacked the quarterback. That he sacked, but they had did the photo shoot with like a see-through sack with all the helmets, and he's here, he's carrying it, and then now they're talking about how great he is, and then how something has to give because now we have to face off, and I haven't given up one. He has, and you know people were placing bets on this and all right. like, and it was just like that one game. I'm not gonna lie, that one game right there was like. So I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> he's going to get one or he's not. And I was just like really focused on that game. And yeah. then he was spinning and he was being able to use his leverage and like just throwing people. And I'm just like really trying to figure out. And that's one game besides Jamal Reynolds and Alex Brown. That game I really sat there and just really, after our team meeting sat down there with Coach Cristobal and really was watching like, what is going on? Is he this good or is the offensive line doing something wrong? Is it a combination of both? Like yeah. what is it like? And I just was seeing, and I just was convincing myself, like, that's not going to happen to me. And it's mental, too. Right. When you start, like, telling yourself, like, yeah, I see, okay, the offensive line might did this a little bit, or this person might have been a little late. Okay, he did do a good move. Like, and in my mind, I was just like, I see what's going on. It's just like, you just can't be late, or you just have to, okay, be okay to know how to counter that spin and just be prepared. And I feel right. like I was just mentally, and I've seen it so many times, and just visualized watching his spin move and when he did it and how he was lined up and when he was tight and when he was wide. We like do like I just knew all those things going in. So when I line up and I would see the how he's aligned, you were ready. it gave me an idea of okay, he's either gonna do this or that when he's lined like this, when he gets closer, he's gonna go straight aside. Like I just knew my options of when I seen things and I also yeah. knew, okay, is it a three step drop, five step drop? If I really gotta hold on, like if it's number me a nine step drop, like just knew the different steps and just Went in there every time I lined up with a game plan. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Did they give you any help that game? Like, was there any a chips or A little bit. No? Yeah, I was getting chips, so I knew when I didn't want him to beat me to the inside. I always knew that. And, like, you know, going up to the line, I would look back at Porters, and he'd look at me and, like, just give – like, we had, like, little signals yeah. that, just to make sure we was on the same page because I always make sure we're on the same page. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know you're coming over here as you exit out. <laughs> as and, you get out. You know, yeah. I don't want to think – that you know that I need to look at you like confirm you like you know right okay yeah and we look yeah. or I say something before we leave the house like you know you gotta exit my way and he's like yeah I got you and you know Clinton loved that chipping and try to knock yeah. people so I always establish that communication especially on pass protection because I need to know that you know <laughs> right you know what I mean because if 
I'm just setting to protect my inside, and all of a sudden he's rushing the field, and you don't chip. That makes me look crazy. That's so right. He'll get on your edge. It's all that's what I say. It's communication between me and everybody. I always yeah. knew like what was going on. No doubt. Well, that's awesome. And and yeah, it, it's there's no when when you start talking, Brian. There's no doubt what made you successful. Mm -hmm. You know, other than people. And again, I'm not. I know I'm making. I'm, I'm bringing it to light. Obviously, you're 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 a big man, mm -hmm. but. The, you, your level of intelligence, mm. your level of communication, mm. your level of preparation. Mm. And then one thing that, and it was, it started kind of started happening when you were out there talking about uh, tennis and, and, and uh, sports psychologists and stuff like mm. that. But one thing, and, and not knowing you for a long time, but just talking, uh, you're mentally tough. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I could, I could see well, that you're I mean, mentally you tough. You have guy. to look at it too. Like when I went to that JUCO, we didn't have a lot of things. Um, far as like I had high uncle springs and things there and I would call home and say hey how can I fix this oh put it in an episode like I, we didn't have like a big training staff you right. know what I'm saying another thing that I learned at the JUCO was about being mentally tough and and I have access to all the stuff like you know so they always would tell you you can't make the club in the tub and that means being in the hot tub the training room basically like you can't make the club in the tub yeah. so keep being injured you can't make the club I never missed a game due to injury on a college or the professional level because my mindset was I'm not I don't have time to be hurt. Yeah. I'm not gonna give anybody a chance to take my position yeah. either. So you never got a chance to play behind me. Sure. And there was years like, you know, even in Minnesota, you had years where I didn't really have no backup. You know what I mean? And they just looked at me as durable. I never had a backup. You had a, another great tackle named Donald Penn who came in as my backup and they ended up just transferring him over to Tampa Bay and he had a great career there. But I wasn't going to never give him the opportunity to get on the field. <laughs> yeah. Well, to me, that that's mental toughness, the pride, mm -hmm. and then you know uh, we we say it oftentimes, but most important ability really is durability. Yeah. In this game, and especially you know, and and now it's kind of trickled down to college, but it's 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 there's a business aspect to it, and you know that if you if, don't matter how talented you are, if you're not durable and you can't answer the bell right. on Saturdays in college or on Sundays in the NFL, they'll look for the next and person. And then there was a saying that we were um, leaving out of the locker room. I want to say this was either, I want, oh, this was in Minnesota. There was a saying that I'll never forget. And it said, when you step out on the field, always play at a level that your opponent is unwilling or unable to match. Mm. So I always, when I go out on the field, I always think that like you got to play at a level that they're unwilling or unable to match. So you can see when you're breaking somebody. And I feel like yeah. that gave me even more, or actually when they're tired, they gave me more like, Energy or strength, like I'm wearing them down, I'm wearing them down. Yeah. And even a two-minute drill, and I used to hate two-minute drill. <laughs> and it's like, all right, I can see this, like he's wearing down. And then it's just you have to be mentally tough because then once you get past that 50 yard line, here come a new wave of guys. <laughs> like, yeah. All right, I gotta try to wear him down too now. But sure. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you, I like that feeling that once I see I I'm, I'm breaking him, like I'm wearing him down. So now yeah. that's the mindset you have to have. Yeah, and you know, it's it's so we've got, you know, a lot you know, we've had this this recruiting class that we had last year that everybody's touting and stuff like that. And I would tell you that that's, they have that mindset, mm -hmm. you know, to me, which mindset is the most is important. important. Yeah, no doubt. Um, we, we said this, we were talking amongst ourselves earlier, Vernon, uh, Vernon Carey was saying like, he feels like our, you know, class was like one of the best class that came through for us. Cause we all came together, me, him, Clint Porters, Andre Johnson, mm. Phil Buchanan, all of us came together in the same class. Wow. And he was like, we feel like we kind of helped set the mold because we came in and, you know, back then he still had hazing, but we didn't care. Like we, we had a whole situation where we knew the defense was at um, a barbecue and we called them over and told them that we were in the locker room waiting on them. And we just had to wrestle it out and, you know, weren't, wasn't scared to compete. And when we got out there, we were trying to take people jobs. Clint Porter yeah. was in there trying to take James Jackson job. Like we weren't, you know, people were getting um, used to like, being complacent, like, well, I'm only a freshman, so I'll just wait my turn. Mm. We did not care. No. We came here to play, and we were going to battle you every day and try to take your job. Now, that made the other person have to play harder That's because right. you're at risk of losing your job to this freshman. So now I have to step my game up, and something's going to give. Yeah. Whether you get hurt or something, we're going to get in there still and make you fight for your life. So that's why our practices were so intense because – we're trying to take jobs at practices, and now they have to raise their game up. You're forced to. And it's, that's why I would try to tell these young guys, like, don't feel like you got to sit and wait. Like, oh, I'll wait my turn. No, just go take it. Like, well, it's not your fault. And like you said, time waits on nobody. And, no, not and, at all. And, and competition is, is the most important thing that Coach Cristobal, that's, what, that's, why, that's why you recruit, right? You recruit to create competition. Right. 
not only to bring better players in, but to elevate the level of play of the guys that are already here. Mm -hmm. And if guys don't like it, then those aren't the guys that you're going to win with anyway. They're not mentally tough anyway, so you don't really need those guys. So that's right. And and you know what, iron sharpens iron. Exactly. You know, iron sharpens iron. And you know what, Brian? The one thing, and I I know we, I guess we got to go here in a second. Uh But the one thing that that I, you know, when I used to watch you play, whether it was in college or in the NFL, it almost looked like you made things look effortlessly and effortless and smooth. And now I'm talking to you. Mm. I know why. It it's because, mindset. yeah, it was your, <laughs> your mindset and your preparation. Yeah. You know, and, and you combine that mm-hmm. with, with your power and your athleticism, and that's a lethal combination. Right. You know, and I think, um, you know, and it, the one thing, you know, it, it seems that you were a guy that kind of figured stuff out, mm-hmm. you know, and kind of, all right, you might be dealing with something, but you know what? I got to overcome it because right. whether it's in the game or in the game of life. You have to know how in the middle of the game to make adjustments. Amen. You know what I mean? So, Amen. yeah, it's big. Amen. Well, Brian, appreciate you, and oh, uh, no problem. please know that this the, the offensive line room here at the University of Miami was built on on yeah. the shoulders of men like you. Right. And please know that you're you're always welcome in that room. So just like iron sharpens iron, right. we need competition. Mm-hmm. I need competition. Right. I need I need someone to come in and 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 challenge these guys and keep dropping that knowledge on mm-hmm. on these guys. So appreciate you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. No, thanks. Thank you. Okay.